Hello, and welcome back to my blog, Essays on the Constitution of the United States, Part 4, Cassius 3. The Massachusetts Gazette, number 383, Friday, November 16th, 1787. For the Massachusetts Gazette. It was the saying of an eminent legislator that if we had angels to govern us, we should quarrel with them. The conduct of some among us has repeatedly evinced beyond a doubt that this would actually be the case. We have proof of this in a more particular manner in the opposition now made by some, but I sincerely hope the number is few, to, form, to the form of government agreed upon by the late Federal Convention. I firmly believe if a form of government was proposed to some of the inhabitants of the United States by the great author of nature himself, founded on the basis of eternal rectitude, and sanctioned in the courts above, that they would object to it. It is a happy circumstance for the citizens of the United States that they are acquainted with the motives which actuate the present opposers to the plan of the federal government. As they now, instead of listening with candor to the dictates of mad frenzy and wild ambition, will treat with the deserved contempt all their productions. The opposers to the plan of federal government are composed of such as are either deeply in debt and know not how to extricate themselves, should a strict administration of law and justice take place, or those who are determined not to be contented under any form of government, or of such as mean to owe their greatness to their country's ruin. Are such fit men to point out objections to a government proposed by the first characters in the universe after a long and candid discussion on the subject? Are such fit characters to propose a government for ruling a free and enlightened people? Can those who are known to be divested of honor, justice, and integrity expect to propagate sentiments that will outweigh those of men whose character as true Republicans and wise statesmen are known from pole to pole? Men whose wisdom and firmness have emancipated the United States from the yoke of bondage and laid the foundation of an empire, which, if the people will still follow their precepts, will last till time shall be swallowed up in the wasteless ages of eternity. Can scribblers, whose fame is but of a day, think to influence the citizens of the United States so far as to cause them to respect a form of government calculated to diffuse the blessings of civil society far and wide? If they can harbor ideas of such a nature, I pity their weakness and despise their villainy. Some writers in Pennsylvania, New York, and Massachusetts have displayed their scribbling talents in opposition to the plan of federal government, but it is easy to perceive by their arguments that they are men who are fearful of not being noticed in a federal government or are some of the stamp before mentioned. Their arguments are without weight and their assertions and insinuations as foreign to the real state of facts as anything possibly can be, they anticipate evils which, in the nature of things, it is almost impossible should ever happen, and, for the most part, their reasoning, if it is not a degradation to reason to call such jargon by its name, is incoherent, nonsensical, and absurd. <clears throat> Some writers in Massachusetts have discovered such weakness, inconsistency, and folly in their productions that it discovers them to in be entirely ignorant of the subject they pretend to discuss, and totally acquainted with the plan of government proposed by the Federal Convention. Among this number is a scribbler under the signature of Vox Populi, whose signature, to have been consistent with his productions, should have been Vox Insania, <clears throat> whose signature, oh, I read that, this pompous and very learned scribbler goes on to harangue the public about the danger, hazard, terror, and destruction which will attend the adoption of the Federal Constitution. He pleads in a mournful strain much about woeful experience. From this circumstance, I am induced to suppose Vox Populi was an adherent of the celebrated Shays in his unfortunate expedition last winter and woefully experienced the misfortune attendant on the insurgents through the energy of government. However, the inhabitants of Massachusetts may be assured that they will have woeful experience with a witness 
if they suffer themselves to be led away by such ignorant, knavish, and designing numbheads as Vox Populi and his clan, so far as to reject the plan of federal government proposed by the convention. Vox Populi complains that our source for taxes is exhausted, and says we must have a new system for taxation. But he must consider that if the federal government is adopted, we shall not have occasion to employ the legislature so great a part of the year as we are now obliged to do. Of consequence, government will be able to apply their money to better uses than paying anti-federalists while they, while they are spreading their poisonous vapors through the already too much infected atmosphere. Mr. Vox Populi remarks that some people are already taxed more than their estates are worth. In this instance, I sincerely believe he speaks the truth. But what is the occasion of their being thus taxed? <clears throat> it is because they make a show as though they have property, though in fact it belongs to another. They live sumptuously and riot in the property of their unfortunate creditors. Perhaps Mr. Vox Populi is one of this class and has woefully experienced a taxation more than his whole estate is worth. If he is, I would advise him, instead of employing his time in belching out his de facto's plene proofs and other chit-chat of the like kind, and disseminating his execrable ideas, to go about adjusting his affairs, as it will tend more to his honor, and perhaps be the means of saving him from the woeful experience of confinement in a place much more fit for him than that in which he now is. I pity Mr. Vox Populi's weakness and conceit in thinking he and others of his class have accents not less majestic than thunder, as I really think he is very singular in his opinion. Instead of his accents being majestic as thunder, they are as harmless and insignificant as the feeble breeze. Citizens of Massachusetts, look well about you. You are beset by harpies, knaves, and blockheads who are employing every artifice and falsehood to effect your ruin. The plan of federal government is fraught with everything favorable to your happiness, your freedom, and your future welfare. If you reject it, Posterity will execrate your memories and ceaselessly insult your ashes. If you adopt it, they will revere your departed shades and offer up libations of gratitude on your tombs. May that wisdom which is profitable to direct guide your judgments, and may you, by adopting the federal government, secure to yourselves and your posterity every social and religious advantage and every national blessing. Cassius. Make it a great day, and bye for now.